All right, we're going to go ahead and get started in just a minute. All right, I want to thank everybody for coming to the December 15, 2016 Murray County Board of Education meeting. Uh, first item, we need to take the row, so I'll ask the vice chair to take the row for us. Ms. Parker? Here. Ms. Kinzer? Here. Ms. Martin? Mr. Pennings? Mr. Moore is present. Mr. Atkinson? Here. Mr. Bates? Here. Mr. Beaver? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Ms. Marinci? Mr. Dudley. Here. Mr. Chairman, we do have a quorum. All right. I'm showing we've got eight members, so you're correct. We do have a quorum, so we can go ahead and get started. First thing that we're going to do, we're going to take the Pledge of Allegiance. That's going to be led by Wright Elementary School today. And then after we uh, stand for the pledge, if everyone will remain standing, we're going to have a moment of silence after the pledge. Thank you. All right, again, I want to uh, thank Wright Elementary School for uh, leading us in their pledge tonight. Um, as we're going through the agenda, you'll see that we have a reminder of what our mission is, is just to kind of keep that uh, front of mind. And also, I've added a new item to the agenda. You'll see we have some uh, planning horizons. That's just to uh, cause us to hyperventilate every once in a while when we see uh, how much time that we have before budget season and before the next school year. But to kind of keep us on task, we do have a number of things that the board has to do. And so hopefully that will keep us focused and on task to get those things done within those planning horizons. All right, moving on, we do need to formally adopt our agenda. Everyone has the proposed agenda in front of them. I did want to note, I did uh, have Ms. Shirley, she actually added one item to our consent agenda. It's uh, regarding a school trip of the Central High School basketball team, girls basketball team. It's going to be an overnight trip on December 27th through 30th. And it should be in the electronic agenda. I'm not sure if it's on the paper agendas yet. But that's something that originally came to me uh, for executive committee um, approval. But looking at our policy, I believe, <clears throat> probably unless it's an emergency, anything that's going to be an overnight trip probably needs to go before the board. And that's the way I read the policy. So I did ask that that be added to the agenda. It is an overnight trip um, that's going to be out of state. So that uh, is an addition to the consent agenda. Uh, with that, if there's are there any other changes to the ad proposed agenda? And if our minutes will reflect that Ms. Morancy is present now. All right, if there are no changes, is there a motion to approve the agenda as revised? All right, got a motion by Ms. Kinzer, second by Mr. Atkinson. Any discussion on the motion? See a number ready to vote. Kenzer made the motion, second by Mr. Atkinson. And hopefully everyone will bear with us. We do have a new voting system. We're uh, now electronic, so everything's going to be recorded electronically. And we're going to see if it lets me vote on my phone, so we'll see.
Now, if, if things don't go correctly, Mr. Moore and his committee had the first run, so we'll blame uh, him and his committee on that. Oh, okay. All right, so what I'm looking at, it looks like that uh, motion did pass mm -hmm. on a vote of, did you say nine? Nine. Nine to zero. And two absent. All right, so we do have an agenda. All right, so let's go ahead and move through the agenda. Next thing that we're on is uh, recognitions and announcements, and it looks like uh, Murray County has been very blessed that we have a lot of announcements to make, Mr. Brown. I think uh, you're the recognizer in chief. Is that correct? The recognizer in chief. Yes. Uh, great night. We have a lot of young people in the audience not to be recognized, and we want to uh, begin that. Uh, Chairman Bates, uh, been a great year of athletics in Murray County. A lot of success with our teams. And uh, this, this month, we have three teams we want to recognize and three individuals. Uh, we're still going to move a little, bit, a little bit different than what's on the agenda because Spring Hill Middle School has a basketball game going on tonight. So those guys have got to get in here and out of here. So um, at this time, we'll ask uh, Dr. Sparrow and Mr. Slatton and Coach Sackowitz to come forward and um, Spring Hill Middle School's football team, the uh, Big South Conference champions. Good evening, board members, Dr. Marzak, Chairman Bates. Although I would love to recognize this wonderful group of young men, I would like to honor and recognize our wonderful athletic director, Rex Slatton. Um, if it were not for this man, our program wouldn't be what it is today. So I am going to give Coach Slatton the honors of recognizing Spring Hill Middle School football team. All right, thank you. Uh, I, just, I would like to say how proud I am for the uh, Spring Hill community and, the, and these uh, support that we get. Uh, my, our coaches have worked very hard. The administration has been very supportive. Uh, Spring Hill has been very good to me. I've been in this community for a long time. If you ever need anything, all you have to do is ask these people. They will help you out and get everything going. But I'm going to turn this over to the people that really do the work, and that's Coach uh, Matt Sackwood. He is our head coach. All right, we appreciate you having us here tonight. I want to recognize a few people. Um, our administration, uh, they've been great for us. Coach Latin does a lot of work. Uh, my coaches, some are here tonight, some aren't. Uh, Brandon Reeser, Chad Sebleski. We have Michael Tucker. Um, who am I forgetting? Donnie Chambers. He's basketball coach tonight. That's why they're there. All right, I also want to recognize some of the kids that are here. Uh, we got Dante Prowl, Preston Workman, Luca Boylan, Fee Den, Brantley Whitwell, and Trent Parks. A little bit about our season. Uh, we did win the Big South Championship. Um, we went 8-0. Uh, this is actually the fourth championship in six years. Um, it's great to see some of the guys in the back here and their success because they're a big part of our past. Um, so it's, it's great to see. Thank you all. <laughs> 
<clears throat> well, on behalf of the board, uh, definitely congratulations on a great season. Thank you. As the coach referenced, uh, every good high school program needs a good uh, middle school program to feed it, and Spring Hill High School uh, does have that, that luxury of having a good middle school program to, to feed their high school program. Coach Emmons is here tonight with his team, uh, the Spring Hill High School Raiders, who advanced to the state quarterfinals in the playoffs this year and look forward to it even better next year as they begin uh, continue to grow their winning way. So I'll ask Coach Emmons and his group to come forward. Dr. Potts. <laughs> Dr. Potts, looks like you brought some big guys I with did. you here today. They take good care of me, too. <laughs> especially when we're walking down the halls. Um, good evening. As the middle school said, they do a great job of sending us wonderful kids and, you know, to our athletic program. And um, this year we hired a new coach, Coach Jay Emmons, and um, he did. He took us to the quarterfinals, and I am going to let him continue from there. Thank you all for having us tonight and for recognizing it's, it's a – honor for us to be here and to, you know, hopefully do something that Spring Hill can be proud of. Uh, I want to start off, even though she says I get the credit, the ones that get the credit are the guys over here, and we do have some coaches on here, but Coach Jason Busby, Coach Nick Deschamp, Coach Will Fisher, Coach Cody Casaza, uh, Coach Rick Brackney, who is not here, and Coach Josh Furtaud, who didn't have a chance to be here. These guys do all the work. I get to stand up front and recognize the people that, you know, really deserve the credit. I want to introduce some of these guys. Uh, some of them probably heard of, and some of them are going to be more of a household name here before too long. But uh, we have Justin Oden, Jerry McLeod, Darren Johnson, Dante Smith, Javon Harris, Mason Jernigan, Zach Hotelling, Eston Carlton, Kyle Tidwell. <laughs> 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 Had to think about that one for a minute. Uh, Ethan Holtgren, Caleb Terrence. Joby Smith, Divi Patel, Dylan Tidwell, and of course Dylan Harris. Now these are my guys. These are the uh, the backbone of what we did. Uh, we only have a few of our senior here, but I want to make sure that they get recognized that their hard work and their determination is what put us on the right track. So juniors, you guys got something to live up to. But thank you guys so much. Oh, about the season. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to say something about the season. As the season goes, this was the most successful year since, I believe, 1992 by advancing to the third round of the playoffs. So it's uh, definitely set the bar high. It was a great first year for me. Our administration, all the boosters, the community have been more than gracious and can't look forward to doing it again. Well, on behalf of the board, I uh, definitely want to congratulate the team. And uh, no. we're looking forward to you all coming back next year, winning the state, right? So, so you know, y'all are definitely making progress. So we, we definitely, uh, on behalf of the board, we appreciate uh, uh, the accomplishments that you all done. So congratulations. Thank you. Our next group to be recognized is uh, the Santa Fe Unit School Middle School Cross Country Team. Uh, they advanced uh, to the state championship round and were uh, state runners up, uh, TMSAA state runner ups in cross country. So at this time, we'll ask uh, Miss Willie and Coach Slaughter and his team to come forward. Good evening, and thank you for having us here. It's hard to imagine on a cold day like this, but uh, I watched these these students running by my office window with sweat dripping off their noses and 
and red faces and coming in, you know, just all exhausted. But it, it's hard to imagine that on a cold night like tonight. But I do appreciate the hard work and the dedication that these young ladies and Coach Slaughter has given to our, our school to represent us well. So I'm going to introduce Coach Jonathan Slaughter. Uh, I want to thank you for having us here tonight and recognizing this uh, great group of girls. I want to thank uh, Miss Willie for giving me the opportunity uh, to coach this uh, group of girls. Uh, my assistant coach is not here tonight. She couldn't make it, but uh, Judy Melton is a volunteer assistant that uh, has extensive running experience, and she's been very uh, helpful uh, in, in helping us plan our practices and, and going to the meets. Uh, I have a great group of parents. If any of you have ever been to uh, cross country meet, uh, my, my parents spread out along the course and they're really good at encouraging and motivating. Uh, so like I said, I'm just blessed to get, get to coach this group. This is only our second year to have a middle school cross country team. We started the team last year. Uh, last year we finished third in the state uh, and this year we came back and, and were runners up in the state. Like I said, the, the key is I'm blessed with a, with a great group of girls. It's a great group of athletes. Uh, they're going to be here at the January meeting being recognized. Many of these, well, all of these girls also play on my middle school basketball team that won the county championship last week. Uh, so, like I said, I'm just blessed with a great group of girls. We're missing a few, uh, but the ones that are here, this is Alyssa Ackeson, Josie Parks, Emmy Bates, Elise Ackeson, Avery Slaughter, and Lacey Wharf, uh, and I appreciate them coming out. And like I said, uh, look forward to what they're going to do next year. Uh, of these girls that are here tonight, uh, five of the six are, are seventh graders. I think we got a good chance to uh, go back and do something special again, both in cross country and in middle school basketball. So, like I said, I'm just blessed to get a, to have the opportunity to get to coach them. And I once again want to thank Miss Willie for giving me that opportunity. Thank you, well, Coach. Well, Coach, I know you've done a great job with the girls. Girls, they didn't. Uh, Coach Slaughter didn't make you uh, run here today, did he? So, but uh, definitely congratulations. I thought I may have to uh, recuse myself uh, a little bit since I've got a conflict of interest there uh, related to one of those girls. So, thank you. Just a little bit of a relation to the one. Okay, the 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 next three on on, on my group, I'm going to re recognize all three together. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor as a school system to have one person or one team or one school recognized for the AF Bridges Award. AF Bridges Award is presented yearly by the TWSAA, and in order to be considered, you must have uh, outstanding sportsmanship, your school, and, and your, or, or you must ex exhibit uh, above reproach sportsmanship during games and treatment of officials and other teams. And so we, ha we were uh, triple blessed this year. Uh, very rarely does one school system have three winners, but we did this year, and uh, we're really proud for them, and I'd like for them to come forward at this time. It's Dr. Christine Potts, principal of Spring Hill High School. She is the AF Bridges Award winner for Administrator of the Year. Coach Derek Boyd of Mount Pleasant High School Boys Basketball Coach is the AF Bridges Award winner for Male Coach of the Year. And Mr. Shaw Daniels, uh, is the TWSAA AF Bridges Award winner for con Contributor of the Year. And uh, we appreciate these three uh, fine folks for all they do for our young people and for our school system and for our communities. Uh, these are the type of people that we want uh, working with, for, and, and around our children, uh, and I appreciate them. So thank you. Congratulations, and uh, thank you for all of uh, the contributions that you all have done. All right, moving on. Uh, Dr. Marzak, looks like we have another recognition for well child. Yes, is Roxy Pease in the room. Here she is. All right, if you'd step up to the mic. Thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. Hi, good evening, and Merry Christmas. Uh, my name is Roxy, and I am your school representative for well child, and we've been in your school district longer than I can remember, and I love our partnership that we have with you. I enjoy my principals and all the children that we help take care of. In front of you is just a little snapshot of what we did last year in your school and where we're at this year. Of course, we still have sports physicals left to do and finish out the rest of our optometry and our physicals that we do on our children. But it shows you some of the findings, and I just wanted to share that with you. 
So since I have a relationship with your schools, I also work with an organization that is called uh, Remote Area Medical. And um, it's an organization that comes into a community and they perform free health care. And this is the second year, second year that we have um, partnered with them. It's the Filipino Association that actually supports this, raises the money, which it's like over $20,000 to bring this group here to be able to do what we do. But we served over 500 and some people at our last uh, clinic that we had. The first clinic was two years, uh, was two years ago, and it, we held it at Columbia Central High, but since everything was all messed up, with Thorne said that we could move there uh, this year, and we were there this summer, and like I said, we saw over 500 and 40 some uh, patients. They do everything from uh, giving glasses to making dentures, and we pull a lot of teeth. We had one one man that showed up there at, um, Doug, was it Friday? I think it was like Friday morning at eight o'clock in the morning, and he was the first in line because he wanted to make sure he could get dentures. So um, if you don't know the story of Remote Area Medical, look them up. It's a great organization. They do a lot in third world countries, plus here in the, in the United States. So with that being said, I just want to thank you for letting us use your facilities. We couldn't do it without you. We're going to be coming back, not this summer, but we're planning for uh, 2018. And I just have a little uh, certificate of appreci uh, appreciation from the Filipino community for the board and also for uh, Mr. Capella. And I also uh, took the uh, newspaper clipping that the Daily Herald ran on us, and I had it framed up. And I've got, got one for each one of you. <coughs> and that's, again, I appreciate everything y'all do for me. And the, um, your janitorial, Mr. Nolan at Whitthorn Middle School, he is a blessing to you all. He was the biggest help that, he was very much needed that day. <laughs> New, so he, we became fast friends. Yeah, okay. it was great. <laughs> it was great. There's Thank you, Roxy. And there's this. This was already hanging up. I recognize this. Uh, thing. Oh, just to get Thank it. you, Roxy. Thank you. All right, thank you for that presentation. We appreciate that. Okay, moving on, we're uh, now to the Murray County Education Association. As, as you may be aware of as uh, board members, we've had numerous payroll issues since July 1st. And it's been a tragedy that it's taking so long to resolve things like wrong paychecks, wrong deductions, lack of pay to subs and stipends, and so on and so on. Uh, now the worst has happened. Teachers and staff did not get our paychecks today. This is unacceptable. And I think what most people are upset about more than anything else is that we were promised that not having a memorandum of agreement and understanding would not affect our lives in any way, that things would go on just exactly as they have. But that's not the case. Um, we have had uh, this payroll mess today, and uh, the, overall, the overwhelming message that we're getting, and we've gotten our cell phones have just been hot all day long from all over the county. And one thing that uh, we feel like we need to bring to your attention is that 
technology is not always the answer to every problem. Now, we don't know exactly what's caused the problem today, but if it has anything to do with Skyward or having people trained to run Skyward properly, that's got to be fixed because it is very much adversely affecting the lives of the people that you employ. Um, another thing that's happened since the no memorandum of understanding is that, and I'm not sure that all of you are aware of this, there in some schools, in some places, there have been regular, lengthy, unnecessary faculty meetings. Now, under the memorandum of understanding, there was a uh, amount of time that could be spent with that. There was a, a number of times a month that that could be done. But it is getting to where, in some places, it is an imposition on the time of the teachers, an imposition very much outside the school day. And in, in some places across the county, we have had a significant loss of planning time on various levels from kindergarten through the 12th grade. But the main thing today is this, this payroll problem. Now, it may not seem like much to some of you, if, you know, if you've got plenty of money, if you get paid better than teachers get paid, it's not a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to teachers and administrators and all of your support staff. Uh, it's very significant. According to the teachers that we have heard from today, all across the county, house payments have bounced. And uh, doctor, that we had a woman who's, who had to cancel a doctor's appointment for her sick child because she didn't have the money to pay the copay for the doctor. We had one employee that had to borrow gas money to get to school today. Uh, phone bills, phones have been turned off. Car payments have been missed because they didn't go through. Um, and these are just some of the texts and phone calls that we got today. Um, all of the officers of the Education Association got uh, messages like this today. And we kind of, we, in addition to this, we just think that there are other financial problems that may not be being brought to the surface. Um, and this has got to be fixed in order for us to have a working relationship. You cannot expect people to give 100% when we are already underpaid to start with and then not pay us. Um, we count on this. For some of us, this December paycheck is the most important paycheck of the year. And they come back to back by tradition on purpose so that we get paid and so that since we don't make a great deal of money, many people uh, pay Santa Claus with this money. And that didn't happen today. Uh, and it's, it's just not acceptable. Uh, and there are things that are included in the MOU which would have prevented this. Uh, they could have possibly prevented the whole issue. And we look forward to the time when this issue and all the financial issues are brought to resolution and to a time when the memorandum of understanding, including the salary schedule, which was agreed upon by consensus, is uh, adopted by the board. Thank you. We need an explanation, an honest and direct explanation of what went on today. We're all suffering from this. Uh, people haven't gotten their money. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hubner and Mr. Warman. I did want to address some of these concerns. Um, and I'll be blunt. There's no sugarcoating this. Uh, it's very disappointing what I'm learning as far as the payroll. So I'm just as disappointed as you all are. And this is completely unacceptable as far as our employees not being paid on time. Um, now, there may be some explanations for what exactly took place with the bank, and I, I don't know. But ultimately, the buck stops with the superintendent, and ultimately, the buck stops with this board. And I know that our employees don't want to hear excuses. They want action. They want it fixed. They want it fixed yesterday. And so I will tell you that I'm, 
I'm very concerned about what has happened. I feel like we as a district have made so much progress and there's so many good things that are happening and I do not want something like this particular like paycheck be something that's going to eclipse all of the goodwill that we're building and all the good that we are doing. So I, that's one of my concerns. And so this is, it's very important that this be fixed immediately. So how can, to move forward, we, uh, we definitely, we can and must rectify this um, and try to regain the confidence of our employees uh, because of this. And I think the number one tonic to try to start that process is number one is this particular payroll to get it fixed and get it fixed now, get it fixed immediately. If uh, our uh, central office staff has to stay there until midnight to get it fixed, then that's what needs to happen to get this fixed. Uh, the second thing is I think there's a larger issue with the payroll system that I think has this board concerned. It certainly has this member of the board concerned, and we got to get to the bottom of it. we got to get to the bottom of what exactly, not just this particular payroll, but the payroll system. And that needs to be fixed, and that needs to be fixed yesterday. And again, if we have to, uh, if staff has to stay until midnight to get these things fixed, it has to get fixed. No more promises. No more statements, but actual fixes. And so what I'm doing as the chairman, I'm calling a special session of our budget committee on Monday, and I'm expecting some action to have taken place by Monday, and I'm expecting some real solutions to be in place by Monday. At that special session of the budget committee on Monday at 6 o'clock, I'm expecting to know that everyone has been paid in our county and everyone has been paid correctly. That's going to be the first thing that uh, the budget committee is going to want to report on. The second thing is, is that the committee is going to ask for a report as to what exactly is going on with the payroll system, a detailed report of what exactly is going wrong and what is the detailed plan for fixing it. And that needs to be fixed by the end of the month. Now, we got to immediately fix this payroll thing, but we've also got to get whatever is the issue with the payroll system our staff is going to have to get their arms around it and figure what's going on and get it fixed. So I do appreciate you all uh, bringing your concerns to the board. Uh, it does not fall on deaf ears. Uh, we certainly uh, understand where the position of our employees and I think employees are rightfully upset and are rightfully uh, wanting this to be repaired. And I think that's the first process of us not losing all of the great things that the progress that we're making. Let's, let, we can try to rebuild the confidence of our employees by fixing this and getting it done correctly and not having this ever happen again. So uh, again, I do appreciate uh, you all bringing those concerns to uh, attention of the board. All right, moving on. Uh, public delegations. Do we have any public delegations that have signed up? If I could have an officer look at the board. Nobody? None? Okay. All right, I don't see that we have any staff reporting, so moving on to the consent uh, agenda. Does anybody want to remove any particular item from the consent agenda to vote on separately? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion, right, motion by Mr. Moore. Second by Ms. Kenzer. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in, well, we're ready to vote. The minutes can reflect that uh, Ms. Martin is present now.
right. So I think Miss Martin is reporting that she's yes, if we just want to note that. That's just the voting preview, though. I think they can close it. That's what they did. Well, I guess that means we can I call for the vote. <coughs> Shut it down. All right, so the record can reflect that that uh, motion did pass on a vote of 10 to 10 to the zero. To uh, committee reports, uh, first report, we have uh, Mr. Moore, your zoning and facilities committee. Uh, looks like you've got um, two recommendations from your committee. Uh, the first recommendation uh, is the amended budget uh, capital budget that I believe your committee is recommending. Uh, so with that, um, is there a motion to approve the committee's recommendation? All right, got a motion by Mr. Atkinson. That does not require a second since it came out of the committee. All right, so is there any discussion on that particular recommendation? Um, I do want to just briefly note that uh, I think at the committee level that there was some concerns just, uh, expressed about maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves too much of voting on this before we've got our 10-year plan that we're also having Dr. Register take a look at. And so I did, actually, I reached out to Dr. Register and Dr. Dr. Edgens uh, just to check with them to see how is this particular uh, addition, does it fit within our 10-year plan or not? And of course, they were reluctant to, I guess, pull something out in isolation to talk about that. But I think they understood uh, that uh, this was a pressing matter, that we were getting ready to vote on this. And so they did uh, share with me that um, this particular edition, it does make me feel a little bit better about the uh, committee's recommendation. They did share with me that the addition does work within the 10-year plan. Um, and what they explained to me is that um, I think we're all aware that we're going to have to have a new elementary school in the, in the Spring Hill area. Uh, but what they indicated was that um, it may be fairly in the near future that we may require a second elementary school. And so what they were saying is how they felt that the addition fits within the 10-year plan is that that may help to postpone that second elementary school. So that's where they thought that it could fit within our 10-year plan. Now, um, they did note as far as portables go, um, they didn't really seem to have a, much of a problem with portables. I think they've been in a school system where portables are used, although I think Davidson County has moved away from portables. Uh, Doctor, uh, Mr. Edgens actually uh, shared with me, and I, I wouldn't put him I wouldn't guarantee him on this, but he did indicate to me that uh, he probably has some contacts in where he's from uh, that could probably get portables. Now, he indicated maybe free. <laughs> now, I wouldn't want to hold him to that, but, I mean, he's got maybe some uh, access to uh, that as a potential option. Um, but, anyway, I wanted to share that with... Uh, the board, I know that was a, a concern about the 10-year plan uh, with the committee, and I had those concerns, and that's why I did reach out to them. I will say that at the end of the day, uh, personally, I still struggle with this decision. Uh, I see the pros, I see the cons, and you know, all I can do is try to weigh the pros, try to weigh the cons, and try to make the best decision that me, myself, personally, think is the best decision. And I'm still, when I weigh the pros and cons with both options of doing the addition or looking at some other temporary fixes to get us until we get a new school done, I still feel that the addition is overall not the best option. Um, 
one of my main concerns is that the addition is diverting uh, ourselves from attention to the real solution. I think the real solution, as I mentioned before, is to hurry up and get a new school built. And I think that's the real solution. So I am concerned about the addition, the, re uh, the committee's recommendation for this addition, that that is gonna divert our attention from the real solution. And when we think about it, ultimately, if we follow the committee's recommendation, we could very well be trying to build an addition this summer at the same time that we're trying to break ground for a new school. And is that really what we want our staff to be diverting their resources, diverting their attention of trying to supervise an addition at the same time that they're trying to ramp up to get things ready for uh, a new school? So that's uh, one of my concerns that I just can't, uh, I guess, uh, get around myself. And then also have a concern that this addition is diverting much needed resources. Because it's not just that we have one need, we have multiple needs that we have to be taking a look at. And when you look at the big picture, this uh, addition of $5 million, that's roughly a third of the money that this board set aside to try to make much needed repairs throughout our county. So we're taking, so we got this huge list of priorities that we said this is much needed things that we need to be doing. And we're taking a third, almost approximately a third, of that funding and we're diverting it to something else and we're not addressing those needs. And so that's another big concern that I have. Now again, maybe the addition from talking to Dr. Rester and uh, Mr. Edgens, it could serve a purpose uh, of a long-term investment that if we do the addition, maybe that does help us to hold things off down the road uh, if we need another elementary school. But these repairs that we're talking about are needed not five years down the road, this is something we need Need, uh, needs to be done now. And so we're diverting resources away from things that needed to be done yesterday and immediately to something that we're talking about maybe that may fit into our plan five years down the road. And so I'm not sure if that's a, uh, the best option. Uh, I do think that um, uh, there is a less costly and viable option that is the portable. And I would only be, that would be the stipulation that they would only be a temporary stopgap measure to get us until we get the new school built. That's the only way I've always looked at the portable option. Uh, but that would free us up to be able to address the other important needs that we have throughout our county. And I think if we're making a decision just on a portable versus addition, I don't think that we as a board, we're, that's, you know, it's part of our job to look at the whole picture. We've got, we've got to look at all of these needs throughout the, the system and try to make the best decision. So respectfully, I just uh, wanted to know that uh, I can't support the uh, committee's recommendation. Any other discussion on the recommendation? Mr. Bates. Mr. Moore. Uh, I, I know we went through this. I appreciate you reaching out to Dr. Register for that. Um, and. and I appreciate his input on that as well. I'm not going to rehash. I think you made most of the points that I, that were discussed at the uh, um, committee level, and and I know we need a solution for Marvin Wright. I just I still don't believe that this is the correct solution, so um, I won't be supporting this either. Yes, um, Mr. Dudley, and then Mr. Beaver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If <clears throat> if we don't carry it on with this Marvin Wright uh, addition. Uh, as as we've voted numerous times to proceed, what are we going to do with the plans <clears throat> and then all that we've done drawn up? What about all the other expense that we've endured? Uh, you know, just like I pointed out last month, it, <clears throat> it's too late for us to keep changing. You know, if we had questions, <clears throat> we, we should have stopped the process uh, a long time ago. Uh, you know, the board, this board voted several months ago to proceed with the addition at, at Marvin Wright. We, we've already uh, gone through a lot of expense. Uh, our partners have gone through a lot of trouble uh, and then did uh, probably a lot of additional work trying to speed up the process, trying to meet the schedules and, and everything. And, uh, you know, I feel like it's... Uh, you know, too too late in the game to be trying to change plans. Uh, portables, you know, even if somebody's willing to give us portables, I'm not voting to put students in portables. 
that's my my feeling. I don't want to force it on anybody else, but uh, I just don't plan on doing it. Uh, I think it's an unsafe environment to ask any of our students to be in. Portables bring on other problems. Uh, part of this Marvin Wright expansion uh, uh, is, is cafeteria improvements. Uh, you know, our staff is saying that uh, whether it's portables or permanent classrooms, they don't have enough enough space in the cafeteria to adequately feed the, uh, the students in a, in a reasonable time frame. Uh, you know, so uh, we need to proceed with that. Uh, you know, um, we're always got a shortage of, of building space. We're always needing additional space in our system. Uh, I believe as Marvin Wright continues to grow the area around there, uh, we're going to find that 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 even if we even when we build an additional elementary school, there's always going to be need for classroom space uh, uh, at Marvin Wright, and then so I don't think it's going to be wasted <coughs> space by any means, and then so I'm going to continue voting for uh, the construction, and I ask that that each of you consider that if we don't do the construction, we just wasted a large chunk of money. Uh, so uh, I ask you to support it. Thank you, Mr. Dudley. Mr. Beaver. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, and I agree with uh, Mr. Bates, Mr. Moore. I know here and, and recently I've supported this, but uh, I've got... Uh, in thinking through all this, I believe that with the money issues that we have currently and and offering to take money from the EMG that, you know, I don't know if we'll ever be able to recover that. And, and you know, when uh, other night, uh, when I made uh, uh, mention about using X, extra funds that we have and uh, uh, and taking money out of the uh, fund balance. Dr. Marzak said we'll wait till January and we'll see what it looks like then. Well, I think, you know, we need to look at the money, where it's coming from and how it's affecting the overall, what we've told the county commissioner, what we would do and how we would do it. And so, you know, I just think that we need to, to use the money and show the county commissioners that we have good faith, that we want to, to use the money as we told them we would and, and try to take as much, if not all of it, out of our hide instead of what we propose to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Hey. Yes. Okay. Dr. Marzak. Thank you. Um, so kind of taking back, one of the things that I've heard this board talk a lot about is we need to do what's best for kids. We need to think about the educational program, what's best for kids. Uh, we, we've had a really good beginning of the week uh, with our state report card coming out. We made some huge gains with concerns to academics. When I think about what we could potentially be doing to Marvin Wright for the next potential two years, to me is not good for kids. Uh, when we talk about safety issues, when we talk about security issues, when we talk about, as Mr. Dudley says, continuing to try to fit more students into the same amount of space, it's, the, the bucket's going to overflow and it's not going to be good for kids. This is going to create, if, if we move, we've spent a lot of money and time already on the addition. Uh, Mr. Mr. Breeden, if you could correct me, I believe we've already spent over $200,000 on the plans for Marvin Wright. And the, uh, over 200000 and the addition alone is only $2.1 million, correct? There's other work that needs to be done, such as an erosion plan and the loop road. And there's some other things that add into that cost that bring it up to $5.4 It's not just the addition of the classrooms, correct? I, I think when you add in the, the, the $2.1 million doesn't include the addition to the ca cafeteria and yeah. things you're talking about. Got you. Got you. So, so th there are other things that have to be done. The, we have a soil erosion problem. That has to be fixed. The loop road has to be put in because we're adding more students at Marvin Wright and the, the traffic is backing up on the main road and causing multiple problems. We've, we've come to this point where, where we're at, this is a good move for student learning to add the addition onto Marvin Wright. 
And it's my encouragement as your superintendent that's you charge me with bringing decisions to this board that I think are in the best interest of kids is to fund the addition at Marvin Wright Elementary School. And also talking to Mr. Breeden, if we have to take from the EMG money, there are things on the list that are not, not going to be funded. They're just going to move down the list to be eventually funded. We're not gonna sacrifice safety and security. We're gonna, we're gonna look at things that could be put down the list that still do not impact student learning at other schools. That's the idea and that's what we're going to attend to work towards. But I would, I would like to, I guess the best word to say is implore this board to let's continue to move forward. Let's build the addition at Marvin Wright and to do what we said we've always done, let's do what's best for kids. Ms. Parker. I think as y'all know at the, the zoning and facilities meeting, I'm not in favor of, of this addition. Um, and in light of what's happened this week, I'm definitely not in favor of this, um, mainly because I don't feel like we have a good handle on what our money situation is. And that concerns me more than anything. Um, and I want our kids to be safe and I want them to have, I want them to have the best. Um, but that includes our teachers being paid. Um, and there's some safety things that when you talk about things being pushed down the list on the EMG report, not that they're not gonna be done, but there's things that I've been, I've been saying for two years since I've been on this board that needed to get fixed at some schools and they haven't been fixed. And I think we all probably have a list like that. So to see money get diverted from EMG to fund an addition to a school, I don't wanna fit, I don't want a, a square peg in a round hole. And if we need to have our new school be 800 people, 800 students, I'm fine with that. But I don't think that we need to be making Marvin Wright an 800 person school if that's not really what's best in the long run for our kids. Now it may be great for two years, um, but in the long run, that's not the vision that I've heard from the director. Um, and I won't go into some of the safety things, but there's a lot of things that, that we could be moving forward on that we're not moving forward on because we're constantly talking about this. And we have more than just one area of our county that we've got to address. And I think if anybody thinks that this money is gonna come back from the commission, then we probably need to talk to the commissioners that didn't get paid today. The, work in our system because I don't know that they're going to turn over any additional funds to us until we show that we've got our finances in order and so for that reason I will not be voting for this addition Dr. Marzan Stan can you address how the the, the capital money is uh, is dispersed um, in in relation to the EMG money and the the bond that we received from the County Commission who holds that money and how it's taken care of. Yes, sir, the bond money is not managed in the school district's financial office. It is managed from the county financial office. So any, any capital funds, whether that be from a bond or capital funds that are appropriated to the school district from the county commission, are managed out of the county budget office, not out of the school financial office. The only capital funds that we've had managed out of the school district financial office are those funds that you've moved from fund balance into fund 141. So typically we'll talk about one fund 141 or fund 177 or fund 178. Those 177, 178 funds are managed out of the county budget office. I just want to just briefly just note, I mean, yes, there's a, I think some funding or some funds are held in certain areas, but at the end of the day, it's this board that decides how to utilize funds. Um, we may take certain requests to the county, but ultimately we're the ones that make the final determination as to what's best for the school system as far as how it's going to be budgeted. So. Uh, I don't think we've ever uh, released our authority to over to another body to make determinations. And I think uh, probably some of those determinations were made based upon things that we did say that we were going to do to begin with. I mean, if you want to get to that point. But I do just want to re reiterate, this is not 
the way I see the the context of this issue is not so much that anybody's against the addition or for portables. I think always has been my perspective of what is the real solution to the growth that we're having in that particular area. Now, we're having to scramble because we didn't have better plans in place, and that's why we're kind of stuck where we're at right now, of having to try to figure out uh, some short-term gaps. But really, the real solution is probably something, and as a director has mentioned several times before, if he had been here maybe a year earlier, we'd probably already be getting ready to open the door to a new school. I think there would have been a recognition of that we should have started that process earlier. So uh, that's, that's just uh, that's the way the, the hand gets dealt to us sometimes, you know, and it's not a very good predicament that we're in. But I still think that the focus ought to be on the real solution uh, one of the next thing, one of the next things on the agenda is to close on this property, and I want to ramp that process up as much as I'm humanly able to, and, and the committee and the board to push that process to get that school built as quickly as possible. Because I, in no way, absolutely do not want children in portables. Okay, I absolutely do not want that. It's certainly just a short-term solution, and, and so I want, if, if that's what happens, I want them immediately, as quickly as possible, out of that situation and into what is real, a real solution is a good school. And I think we can get that done. Man, there's a lot. You also, the uh, uh, planning horizons, you know, it causes to hyperventilate to get a lot of things done. But I think if we as a board really uh, buckle down, we can get some of these things done. But that's just where my concern is, is that we're diverting our attention away, our resources away from really buckling down and focusing and getting some real solutions done out in the Spring, uh, Spring Hill area. So, Ms. Kinzer. I have a comment and a question. Uh, my comment is that I do support building these buildings but today with what we've seen budget wise today what's happened with the money my concern is getting a hold on this um, I would rather see us table it until we know exactly and we feel confident about everything that's going on financially that we we in voting with this tonight I understand it, it's a capital outlay from and it's a different sort of thing but I I think my concern now is that we get a hold of the finances to understand exactly where and how we're going to pay for this whether it'll come out of the EMG funds whether it's going to come out of uh, other places and we know exactly what it's going to be we're, we're, it's kind of like oh it, we can do this we can do that but my other my question and for Stan and Dr. Marzak is we will still have to do something to the cafeteria right or is that correct and still have to do something to the erosion problem even if if we were to not do this the uh the the problem with erosion that was a drainage study that was recommended by the emg facilities okay. assessment so that was part of the work that we would have recommended we would have brought back that recommendation to you as a part of the other repairs that are being done through the through that that fund as well the road uh did you mention the road or the cafeteria which one did you mention cafeteria the cafeteria um obviously if we continue serving lunch the way we do now we will have to have more space in the cafeteria the only other option in in talking with the administration at school is to be to extend the lunch period and feed from 9 30 to 1 30 or something you know i we haven't looked at an exact plan for that so I, I can't tell you the exact specifics of that but they feel like based on our current well we know based on our current capacity we are at capacity based on the way that we're feeding students now and not only that going back to the email that you has been shared with you guys internally the issue that took place is in no relation whatsoever to finances our relationship with skyward or any or any form or fashion which will be discussed uh, later on this evening um, the money is in the emg assessment i do not believe at this time we have the money and fund balance to cover it going back to our fund balance assessment that was given to us back in uh, may and june 
So the only place that this can come from is from the EMG assessment to build the addition at Marvin Wright. And we do have a handle on that. Um, let's see. Ms. Powers, you haven't spoken yet, and then Mr. Dudley. My feelings are similar um, to Mrs. Kinzer. I, I have a lot of confidence, Dr. Marzak, in what you're saying that, you know, this is not um, the, the problem that happened in the last 24 hours wasn't directly Skyward or us, but I feel like along the way we've heard a lot of things and then it hadn't quite panned out, and I just feel like I need to see concrete evidence before I make a decision like this of how we are going to spend money until I have a better handle and see some outcomes that are a little bit more concrete. Um, I have a lot of confidence. However, we've been told a lot of things, and then, oh, you know, we were almost there, but not quite. And this is an this is a big decision to commit this money and where it's going to come from. So, I sure would like also to see it tabled until we get some additional answers. It's those are my feelings. I'm not quite sure how we would go about that procedurally, but these are huge decisions, and we don't know where the money is going to come from. And we just it's been very shaky. And All right, just uh, on a procedural note, I mean, anybody can make a motion to the table at any point. I just will note that if we're going to be able to get this addition done by the opening of the 17-18 uh, school year, I would think that needs to, it needs to happen tonight. Yep. I mean, I think if you delay things, I, I, I think you're really putting staff and um, – behind the eight ball to be able to get that done. Uh, and that was always, always in the background, a concern of mine is can we get this addition done to begin with? I, I always had that concern, but Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, my comments were along the same line. Uh, we're, we're up against the deadline. Uh, our staff, along with the Hewlett Spencer personnel, have told us that, that you know, uh, if we plan on meeting, uh, uh, the next school year as an opening date for this expansion uh, when we when need to proceed. Uh, you know, I think our staff has the cap <coughs> capabilities of, of proceeding, uh, but it was pointed out that we didn't want to over overburden them. Uh, you know, Hewlett Spencer, we brought him on board to take a large part of the burden off of our staff, and they've done a great job each of the projects uh, that they're, they've helped us with uh, have moved along just like what they said it would. Uh, the central project is, is moving along uh, in a nice time, time frame and fashion. Uh, even the help on the uh, concession stand at Central, you know, we had a tight time frame there. Uh, Hewlett Spencer was, uh, did the work to get the job done. Uh, so I believe with their uh, help, we'll, we'll be able to do this addition and, and move on. And even if we uh, are starting a construction of the new elementary school uh, on the land that we hope to uh, purchase, uh, you know, we might as well get a custom. We're, we're probably at some point going to have multiple new school constructions going on at the same time. So, so having an expansion project and, and uh, starting a new elementary school, uh, you know, when they'd get accustomed to it. And I think they've, we've got staff and partners that can handle those challenges. Uh, so uh, I again urge you to uh, vote for this. Uh, as far as the payroll uh, snafu we had today, you know, that has nothing to do with this side of the finances. Uh, you know, I don't know what the problems are, and I'm not not happy that that we've got uh, payroll problems. But uh, you know, we can't just shut the system down and put everything on hold uh, until until we get everything figured out in the finance department. Uh, you know, if we have those concerns, you know, won't we just send out a notice tell the kids to come back uh, sometime next summer, and maybe we'll be ready to operate then. So I heard you just uh, vote for this, and let's not uh, 
get scared because we got a snafu with payroll problems that the world's coming to an end. Yes, Ms. Marancy. Uh, Mr. Breeden, can you give us a breakdown of um, the 5.4 million? Um, what percent or what parts of that would have to be done anyway? If we don't add, if we don't do the addition, I know the road has to go in anyway, and you're saying that there's a soil. Can you break that down for us? I, I'm going to lean on my friends with okay. Hugh Spencer because uh, I don't know that we've defined the budget like that yet. When we did that, do, do you do you have a perspective on that, Steve? I I can go back and look for that budget that we presented to you. I'll I'll find that real quickly while he speaks to that. Do you do you have that there? It's, it's on my computer, but I don't remember what that is. The construction costs, renovation, classroom, and cafeteria addition have not been separated. So uh, approximately 2.1 or 2 million for the classroom addition. Uh, the uh, other renovations that have to do with, uh, with the programming and the needs for the school uh, are part of that. And there's no way to, that I have right now to break it out. But what I will tell you is this. Of course, the loop road construction, we've estimated at $350,000. The existing drainage improvements that are required are less than 50, just under 50,000. And of course, you've got the design fees and uh, the civil, geotechnical, administrative, legal, and testing things that go along with construction, some of which have already been done, such as the geotechnical borings that are required for the structural design. But uh, so what I will tell you is that last week, the bidders, we have the design to the point where we're ready to bid the work. The bidders met and walked through with the plans and saw everything that's being done. And they left there with the uh, expectation that y'all, at that time, we believed you wanted a guaranteed maximum price on it by January the 5th. So those people have already been working hard on doing what we call takeoffs of the plan. They've been there, and everybody's spent a lot of time working on that. And we would be able, on January the 5th, to break out some of these things if you want to, to break it out. We could, we could say so much for the classroom addition, so much for the cafeteria, the loop row. We could get this down into the piece parts of that for you if, if you want to do it that way. But everybody's working hard now to have a GMP for us by the 3rd of January so we can put it into form and be ready for your meeting on January the 5th. I, I might just add the other part of that budget that you didn't have there was the ff &E furnishing fixtures and equipment, which is about $350,000. Computers and desks. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Ms. Kinzer. I mean, I, could, could we defer this uh, back to the zone, uh, uh, facilities and zoning so that we can see what comes in here and the breakdown of this? Yeah, I think if you wanted to make a motion to uh, defer this back to the uh, facilities committee, you could certainly do that. I so move. All right, so we have a secondary motion by Ms. Kinzer. Is there a second on that? All right, so we have a second by Ms. Marinci. All right, so we've got a, uh, this is a secondary motion. Um, is there any, so what we need to do now, is there any discussion on this motion to defer this back to the facilities committee? Yes, uh, Mr. Atkinson. Uh, if we do defer this till next month, uh, or send it back to committee meeting, how much time would you need to be able to have the school ready by next school year? I mean, will January? If, if you refer it back to the Zoning and Facilities Committee, that meeting, I understand, is the January 5th meeting. Yes. So that's what you'd be saying, that you're referring it to this discussion or working to whatever to the January 5th meeting. That, that's all part of the plan. Okay. 
what it will be the last day or the end of January. We made a decision by the end of January. We still have time. Mr. Bates, if I could speak to that on the zoning. Uh, yes, Mr. Moore. Um, I, I think uh, the intention all along was that if, if we could get the GMP at that zoning of facilities in January, where it was, uh, you know, obviously depending on the outcome of that vote, would be to as quickly as we could move to, to get them moving on that. So I think, I think what he's saying, and I'll go ahead and say, is as long as we're making that GMP decision at that point, uh, this is an, more of an internal side of this, as long as we're able to, as quickly as possible after the 5th, get the a vote to them one way or another, they can proceed and they feel like they're still comfortable to move from that point. All right. Well, I'll say, I, I mean, I certainly always want to have as much information as possible to make any decision, so I'll be in favor of the motion. Any other discussion on the motion to defer? Ms. Kinzer, you had your light on. I didn't know if you had anything else. You just got like Christmas lights over there, right? Maybe start blinking. All right. So if there's no other discussion, we're ready to, uh, ready to vote. This is just a motion to defer this recommendation back to the committee. Okay. So really nothing substantive is happening. This is just going to go back to the committee for more digest. Okay. So we're ready to vote.
All right, so are y'all showing a vote? Because uh, we can't see anything on our screens. Yeah, what's the vote, Shane? Yeah. All right, so that motion does pass on a vote to 10 to 0. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Motion. All right, so that motion does pass. So, uh, Mr. Moore, that's coming back to you and your committee for more study. So, uh, moving on to our HVAC unit recommendation coming from the committee. That's attachment 3 that does already have the committee's recommendation. Um, is there a motion to approve the recommendation? Motion, motion by Mr. Moore. Any discussion on that recommendation? Seeing now we're ready to vote. 